Now, we want to talk about this word release. Very important word in the Bible. One of the most common words that is used in understanding the Greek language is the word luo, and it means to release or to free, to set free, uh, to loose. And that's the word that's often behind the English or whatever the language may be, uh, the concept of release. And we need to see that release is the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord releases captives. He sets them free. One of the most important verses that Jesus wrote, uh, read in his hometown of Nazareth the day he opened the scrolls and began to read was this one found in Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. And we find it there in Luke chapter 4 as well as Jesus was in Nazareth at the synagogue. And he opened the scrolls and he read, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has set me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. Now listen to this. He has sent me to release the oppressed. Our Lord Jesus came to planet Earth to do many things, but one of the things he came to do was to release individuals. Now he did this as a powerful miracle worker. He released people from their infirmities, their illnesses, and even their demons. He set them free. He also saw, uh, told them how to be free from their sins and to know God personally and be liberated that way. The Jews thought he would come and liberate them from the Romans, but that was not his purpose at that point in time. He had come to, rib uh, to liberate, to set people free, to loose them from something far greater than any oppressive country. He had come to set them and us free from our sins. And that's the ministry of our Lord to set us free eternally. And we find that wherever he went, he had this ministry of release. But you go back to the Old Testament, to the uh, fourth command about the Sabbath, and the commandment that to rest is associated with the deliverance from slavery in Egypt. And Lois, if you'll read again the fourth commandment as it's written in Deuteronomy chapter five. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you, so, you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your mad servant or maid servant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God, your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. And then we find it again. A verse I've read already, but is very significant in Exodus chapter 23, verse 12. Six days do your work, but on the seventh day do not work. So your ox and your donkey may rest and the slave born in your household and the alien as well may be refreshed. I once interviewed a man that is well known for speaking about such things as intimacy with God, intimacy with God through rest. Eugene Peterson emphasized this particular point. He said, I need to be released or have a day off so that I'm not there at work or anywhere to dominate other people. I release others from myself, human domination, by taking a break, resting. Therefore, other people can rest from my domination. So we need to release others. It's not just about releasing ourselves, but if we take a break, go away to a solid place, other people can do it as well. If we have a kind of boss that is around us 24-7, and sometimes family members are bosses in that way, and they can boss one another around. Nobody gets rest until that bossy person, that boss, takes a break. So you take a break, bosses, leaders, managers, directors, you take a break so other people can take a break as well. Beware of the human domination concept of all of this. But Lord, the Lord we find is not only one who uh, 
delivers captives that are behind bars or otherwise. He delivers cripples. He releases them. And so we turn to the New Testament text in Luke chapter 13 and find that like on so many occasions, Jesus enters the synagogue and he begins to teach there. But in the midst of his teaching, there's someone that comes up and wants to be healed. So it was on this particular Sabbath that Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Here's an example of Jesus entering the synagogue, but here it is on the Sabbath. And on the Sabbath, he stops and he heals a person. Now this would be very disturbing to others, the other leaders, because uh, they thought no healing should take place. They called healing work. And it shouldn't be done in the synagogue, shouldn't be done especially on the Sabbath day. That was the problem they had. But as we've already seen, the Sabbath is associated with deliverance. It was a commemoration of deliverance from Egypt, as we read the fourth commandment just a little bit ago. And we also saw that our Lord's ministry was one of delivering people. But it wasn't a problem with our Lord doing it on the Sabbath. In fact, that's what the Sabbath is for, to actually deliver people. Well, let's read on in this text. We find that uh, they are indignant. That is, the uh, leaders of the synagogue are indignant. And they say, there are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered them, You hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie an ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all the opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. So the Lord has come to deliver cripples, but also critters. Uh, this was a common understanding. They treated their animals better on the Sabbath mm -hmm. than they treated people. They saw it was okay to release and give water to help out an animal on the Sabbath. But when it was someone like a woman in the synagogue needing help right now because Jesus was there, they denied her that. They didn't want to give it to her, but Jesus gave it to her anyway. And I find it interesting that again and again as Jesus enters uh, the synagogues on the Sabbath, he goes, and heads, he goes ahead and releases people. He heals them. He delivers them from their uh, infirmities, from their demons, as it was in the case of this woman. So it is that the Sabbath was a day set aside to commemorate past victories and deliverances from places like Egypt. But it was also the very day when God wanted to release people. It was on that day, not to deny them, but to release them. And I think there's a practical application when people come to our church services. They need to come with the understanding that the Lord is there. He's there to deliver them. He's there to release them. And there are various kinds of burdens. Often our enslavement is the things inside of ourselves, like the worry I was talking about, or the workaholism that was going on in my life, and my family's life, and, and the heritage, where we can't stay no to work. We work and work and work. That's a bondage that we need to be delivered from. And the Lord has come to release us, the prisoners, who have become slaves to our work, our studies, and to our ministries as well. Mm -hmm. He comes to release us. And so we ought to have church services where we invite people to come and be released from the internal things that burden us, that are heavy upon us, the fears we have, the worry. Be released. And so this becomes a time, the Sabbath, our solitude becomes a time to release our concerns. And we're going to talk about how to do that in just a moment. Well, the question is, Regarding the Sabbath, are we going to allow ourselves to be released during such a time, an appointed time of solitude in our every day, and especially our weekly times of Sabbath and rest? Sabbath, a time to release. Sabbath is God's gift to man. We've already said it, but we need to say it again. It's a gift, not an obligation to us, but a gift to be set free. 
Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And as Lord of the Sabbath, he has come to release you, because that is his ministry. He's come to set you free. He forgives you. Maybe you need to release someone else by forgiving them. But take the gift of Sabbath to be released from the burdens, the fears, the worries, the decisions that are bothering you, that are disturbing to you in one fashion or way or another. So the Lord releases captives. The Lord releases cripples. The Lord releases critters. And the Lord even releases Christians in our day and age. You, O Christian, one who believes in Jesus Christ, you've certainly received his release from your sins, the captivity of evil, the devil himself. But have you, have you released yourself from any number of things, the guilt of working, working, the burdens, the fears, the worries, what is it that you need release from as a Christian? I've heard it said a number of times, no rest for the wicked and the righteous don't need any. I found myself living by this statement. No rest for the wicked, and that's actually a verse in the book of Isaiah. But Christians have added the other part. The righteous don't need any. We don't need any rest. We've got Jesus. We don't need rest. How unfortunate, he's Lord of the Sabbath. That means he has come to give us release. And we'll talk about that phrase, come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavily laden, from Matthew chapter 11. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. That's what he's come to do. Have you released yourself? Now, there are New Testament verses, and Lois, if you'd uh, read a few of these New Testament verses that utilize the same concept of release again and again. Um, 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxiety or cares on him because he cares for you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that's Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Praise be to the Lord, to God our Sa Savior, who daily bears our burdens. And that's Psalm 68, 19. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com.